welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I like to paint gems and runestones for the great company of Frostpools. you are and welcome to this little video of mine where I'm going to be showing you how I like to paint gems and runestones for the great company of Frostpaws. Well it's cold and lonely here in Winter Wizard's Frozen Fortress but we just made a nice cup of tea over there, Terran Gold, and I'm joined as always by my comrade and co-host Norwegian Troll Dimu so this is going to be nice and we're here to deliver another installment of painting the Frostpaws so I'm going to dive straight into the, tut into the tutorial but I just very quickly wanted to explain what's going on here. So I've been creating a painting series called Painting the Frost Paws where I'm unveiling all the secrets, all the tips and tricks for painting the colour scheme for my for my Space Wolf's army, the great company of Frost Paws. And what I'm doing is I'm breaking breaking these series down into multiple different episodes, focusing in on a different aspect of the of the colour scheme per episode, but applying all the all the different episodes and all the things to one particular model, which is uh, this character model here, which is Ragnar Blackmane. So if you if you watch the series from start to finish, you'll get to see Ragnar Blackmane here painted entirely from start to finish. So we've done a fair bit of work. We're coming up to about the halfway point of this series now. And today we're going to be focusing in on the runes and the, uh, sorry, the gems and the rune stones. So, so what exactly are those? Well, the gems, he's got like these sort of ornamental, they're almost like diamond shaped gems dotted about on, uh, on him. Uh, we're going to be painting up those and also the rune stones. These are like these little sort of runic totems. They, they look like they're made out of stone with a nice rune, Nor Norse sort of themed runes um, carved into, well, Fenrisian runes, should I say, carved into the um, carved into the stone. So I'm going to be showing you how I paint those today. Got a selection of paints up here, so let me run through those with you. We've got, got a nice base here of Mechanicus Standard Grey. We've got a layer of Dawnstone. Another layer of Administratum Grey. So I've got multiple greys there, but you could just get away with, with one pot of grey, like a nice dark one, and then using something like a white to, to, uh, to lighten it up as you are. But I just happen to have all three of those, so I'm going to be using all three of those. I've also got a, this is, uh, this is MP, uh, some miniatures paints here. This is just a white. Uh, it's just, uh, th these paints, they're, they're pretty thin, to be honest. So that's kind of, but that's kind of exactly why I need it. Um, so this is just a nice, thin, no-nonsense sort of white there. You could maybe use something like a, something like white scarf for layers in, in the Citadel range. Um, as well as that, we've also got Sotek Green here, lovely layer there, as well as Baharoth Blue. And over here, some more stuff from Miniatures Paints here. Uh, but this is just a brush on gloss varnish. So we're going to be using this to just to give a little bit of a shine to some to some features of what we're painting today. Uh, Citadel, they do make these as well. I think the gloss one is called Ard Coat. But you, you can find them. I double check to make sure which one is gloss or not. But yes, yeah, so some kind of brush on gloss varnish. And those are all the paints that we're going to need. Here we are then, so we're all zoomed in here. Uh, I've got my trusty, this is actually, a, believe it or not, a Citadel starter brush, which uh, interestingly I just find really, really good. So uh, it's just some kind of little base layer brush type, um, medium size will do, will do you just nicely. So the first thing we're gonna, we're gonna start with is, yeah, we're gonna do the rune stones first. So this is anything that's gonna look like a stone. You'll see like there's one just, there's one just here, like that. Anything that looks like that, or anything that's kind of a stony, we're going to be we're going to be painting those uh, and we'll do the gems afterwards so well the rune stones first so first uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to kick it off with some with some mechanicus standard gray so always give your paints really good shake of course you'll hear a little clicking noise there that's just a couple of stainless steel ball bearings um, to work as mixing bowls just to help keep the paints nice and nice and fluid and mixed and i've got a little an old brush head here which i like to use just to pop the keep the keep the lid open there and put that in there. I've got my trusty army painter wet palette here. A little pot of water to the side over there. So first thing we're gonna do is make sure this paint is nice and smoothed down. Nice and thin, not watery, but 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 just nice and nice and thin. So this really is the uh one of the things that I think um you should really practice with when, when painting is it's thinning down your paints, of course it is, you know. 
really elevate your painting to a new level. If you can master, master the care of your paint pots. Anyway, I'm waffling now, but here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna come in with the, with the Mechanicus Standard Grey and we're gonna pick out all these rune stones here. Just give them a nice little smooth coat of this all over them, just like so. Try not to, to clog up that detail there. Just brushing a bit of, bit of this away and pulling it back on. Like so. Keeping that nice, the nice rune etched in there. But that's what we're going to do. I'm going to run around this model now, pick out all those little bits, and once that's dry, we'll come back and um, move to the next step. Okay, so that's the Mechanica Standard Grey now nice and dry. I've done a second coat just to make it nice and smooth, but just wanted to re reiterate the point of really trying not to clog up those those little carved bits of the runes there. Just but if you feel like you've overclogged it, then just dry your brush out, try and soak up some of the paint out on the on the bristles there. But now we're going to move on. And next thing we need to do is we're going to bring out either, either you want to either lighten this up with a little bit of white or something, or just bring out a lighter shade of grey. So we're going to do that now with the Dawnstone. And with this, we're just going to be painting the, the main body of the stone again, but don't feel like you need to go all the way into those, into those gaps uh, where, the, where the etched rune is. You can just keep that nice and dark. So this is really just sort of a, sort of a layer, just the main sort of edge and body of the stone. Like so, just to lighten up that colour just to lighten up that colour and so I'm going to do that round all the others and then move on to the next little step and there we go and then once that's dry and that's lightened up the colour a little bit we're going to do one final little highlight and this is going to be with an even lighter shade of grey here so we've got the administratum grey and this really is just going to be for just that very edge very edge of the stone just as a final little little highlight just like so and that's basically it just to line it up just a little bit more give it a bit of dynamic and and there we go so I'm gonna go around and finish all those off like so and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a nice little glowing effect to the actual carved rune itself okay so now the gray of the stone itself is actually done we're going to as i said we're going to going to create a nice little glowing effect where where the shape of the rune has actually been carved into the stone i want to, I want to make those glow so this is where we're going to need the white and we're also going to need a very very sharp little brush here so let's get some white out so i've got some white on the palette here and this needs to be very very nice and thin here because what we're going to do is well i'm here I'm twisting the brush and pulling it to try and get a really sharp tip on it and you really don't want to overload the brush here but we want we still want enough on there because what we're trying to do here is trying to get that white to basically run into the crack of the shape of that stone so it needs to be it needs to be really nice and thin here really nice and thin just to try and really help us and nice fine point and we're just gonna try and poke that in like so if the paint is nice and thin down then it should just run off as well and what you can do is if you make a bit of a mess like I'm doing right now before it dries you can just rub it wipe it off with your finger just like so and that should leave so just leave that white in the gaps there, like so. So I'm going to let that dry and I might go in again just to sort of brighten it up. But uh, first of all, I'm going to run around and do that on the other runes first. There we go then. So that should be the result we're looking for. Like I said, once again, you're just sort of trying to, trying to run that paint down those little trenches, down those little grooves. Just feed in the paint in there. And if it gets a little bit messy, just, just dollop the paint in there and then wipe it off with your finger just like that and what I should do is should, should get rid of the white but keep it in the cracks and I've done that a couple of times just to build up a nice little strong layer here there's one down there I might give that one another go just to show you and so it's gonna be just feeding it into the cracks there I'm trying to keep nice and steady and if I make a bit of a mess just wipe it off like so and there we go. 
So I'm going to let that, I'm just going to leave that for a minute, make sure that that's really nice and dry, make sure I'm happy, make sure I'm happy with them. And then we're going to, we're going to add a little bit of the, going to add a little bit of the Barrow blue, just to give it a little bit of an icy glow. And then there we go, once the white is nice and dry, it's going to be, it's going to be exactly the same principle with the Barrow blue here. So let's get this open. And again, need to make sure that this is going to be really nice and thin. Really nice and thin. Just so it's going to run, just thin it now with some water, just so it's going to run really smoothly and almost quite transparently on top of that white. So we're not just painting a solid, solid film, a solid layer of blue over this. We're trying to create a little bit of a sort of transparent, sort of whitey blue kind of, kind of glow effect. So I've got some of this on the brush again and I'm exactly the same principle. Just going to try and run some of that over the top of that white. If it gets a bit much, we can just rub it off like so. And that really should be enough. Just the one sort of coat of that will be will be perfectly fine. Just gives it a little bit of an icy glow. So I'm gonna finish that on all the others and then, then we'll move on. And so those are the rune stones complete. Well, well, almost anyway, this would be the point where now we would add a little bit of the gloss varnish onto into those runes again, where we've created that sort of glowing effect. We'll, we'll put a little bit of gloss varnish on there, but I'm just gonna hold off for that for a second. I'm gonna paint the rest of it. I'm gonna paint the, the gemstones now. Uh, they're gonna get varnished as well, so I'll varnish them all at the end. But so the, the gems, these are these sort of diamond shape, diamond shaped stones. There's one right on his, right on his sort of like buckle here. So there's a nice diamond shape there. There's one up, up here as well. There's a couple of them dotted around, so we're going to be painting those next. So to kick it off, we're going to need the going to need the Sotec green here. So we're going to crack this open. Really lovely sort of bluish green color here. So we're going to we're going to apply a couple of those, a couple of layers of this onto that stone, try and create a nice sort of nice sort of base color to it. Uh, we'll do the one here, I think. So we'll just fill that in so just where just the shape of the diamonds not going on the sort of casing the edge we've already painted that in the nice bronze so just adding layer of this onto that just to pick out that diamond shape like so so I'm gonna go around and pick out all of those now so those are the gems filled in. I've done a second coat of the Sotec Green to nice build up a nice strong color there. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring out the Barrow Blue again. And with this, so on the stones, they've got a nice sort of, they've got a nice ridge, one sort of straight down the middle and one across. So it's sort of nice sharp points for you. So this is where your, this is where your eyes are really gonna start getting funny. <laughs> this is a, uh, what we're trying to do here is paint just a line of this of this lighter blue here, this Barrow blue. Just paint a nice line of that on that ridge. So directly down the middle. Just trying to make sure that this is relatively in focus for you. I do apologise if we keep going in and out. It's quite it's quite tricky actually trying <laughs> showing these tiny things, but. Um, we're going to paint a sharp line down the center there. Down the top bit there and then underneath as well. You can try and use the sort of side edge of the brush if that helps. And down the left to right hand side as well. Just along that sharp ridge. A little bit of this blue down there, so you've sort of almost got like a cross shape down, forming that sort of cro that cross shape down the down the diamond there where the ridges are. So that's what we're doing here. If you make a bit of a mess, uh, you go back in with a Sotec green, to tidy up the sort of areas that you don't want the barrel off on. But that's it. It's just about a sort of steady hand, maybe giving it a go once or twice. And if you can get that layer a little bit stronger, a little bit sharper even better as well so if you can go in with a second time give that a go so I'm gonna I'm gonna go around and try and get these looking nice and neat and then we'll move on so there we go then so I've done the the lighter blue on the gems there uh, I've gone around it's taken me a few little sort of you know few corrections here and there but uh, I think I'm pretty happy with them 
just trying to, like I said, just trying to create that sort of the two blues working together, the sort of the dark blue and then the, the lighter one on the ridge, just to give it a bit of a feature. And then the last thing we're going to do is take a little bit of the white again, and we can mix this with just a tiny bit of the, uh, of the blue, so it doesn't have to be necessarily pure white, just to take a little bit of that starkness away from it. So create a little bit of a mix of that. Like I said, just taking the edge off it. And that's really just going to be for the very center of the gem. That very center little point, just a little bit of a, just a glint on it there, just like so. Right in the center. Just a glint. So I'm going to go around and add that to, to the little center of the gems there. There we are then, so just that little glint, little shine in the center of the gem. And like I said earlier, the last thing we're going to do now is we're going to take the gloss varnish, going to open this up, and it really is just a, just a case of brushing this onto the whole of the gemstones. And so the whole of the gems, I'll do those first, just like so, just put in a bit of that on top that's going to give it a bit more of a shine and we're also going to run this into back where the runes where we created that bit of shine on the rune stones there we're gonna feed a bit of that just over there give those a bit of a shine as well simple as that really so I'm gonna go around putting the varnish on and we'll be finished and there we have it then, so with the gloss varnish now nice and dry, that is all the gems and the rune stones finished. So, nice and simple really, but um, simple but effective I think. I didn't want to spend far too long painting, painting such tiny little details, but it is nice to, you know, give them a little bit of a, little bit of a feature. So, but there we go then, so those are the rune stones and the gems um, for old Ragnar here. Oh, and there we have it then. So that was another instalment of Painting the Frost Paws, where in this episode I unveiled the secrets of how to paint the gems and the runestones. So that brings us nicely up to the halfway mark of this painting series of mine, so do keep a lookout for some more episodes coming out, hopefully before not too long. If you're looking to pick up some models or some paints, then check out the channel sponsors, Bristol Independent Gaming, and use the code WINTERWIZARD7 at the checkout for your 10% off and free postage on £50 or more. If you have enjoyed the video today, then a like and a comment would be very, very much appreciated. And of course, if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the Frozen Fortress, then perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber. And once again, whoever you are, thank you ever so much for joining me today. I'm Winter Wizard, that's Dimu, and for now, keep it frosty.